that the billiard balls bounce off each other elastically. And then you write down the, the equations for that. And that is, if you like, a microscopic description of a gas. It doesn't say anything about the fact that gas squishes like this and compresses and changes temperature when you compress it. But what's neat about physics is that if you write down the equations for how billiard balls interact if they bounce around a room, then you can do some mathematics to say, well, supposing the room were actually full of a very, very, very large number of very, very, very small billiard balls, then what would happen if we moved the walls in and kept the balls sealed up? Well, as we move the walls in, it, the billiard balls would tend to bounce off faster. And in fact, what the, the average speed as they bounce about would go up. And in fact, it, would, it turns out that this set of billiard balls would react just the same way that we find in microscopic phenomena of a gas day. So that's interesting in physics, that you can, propose, you can propose a microscopic model and then show that it can give you sort of micros macroscopic large scale effects. So, on the web, we get the same thing. There's, a, there's some, some magic thing that happens which relates. Sometimes you can investigate this with mathematics, sometimes you can't. The microscopic to the macroscopic. On the web scale, we're talking about a lot of, of all the people out there, a very large number of web pages out there. So that's this, we've got this huge difference in scale. So the what really emerges is not necessarily related in a planned way. You can't necessarily calculate as you can with statistical mechanics. And gas is the relationship between the microscopic system you've got and the macroscopic thing that emerges. But when it does emerge, then you can analyze it. So you can do science on it. And when you do your science on it, you end up with, well, typically we're never satisfied in this world. We end up with some conclusions about what it looks like. And typically, particularly when we look at we compare it with the values we have for how we want to live our lives, for how we like people to be able to communicate, when the social values, like intellectual property rights and truths and so on, that we think run our, uh, run our lives, then often when you look at what happens out there in this large system, you find that it's imperfect, and you end up with a set of issues which you would like to resolve. So that is when, if you like, another miracle occurs. There's two miracles. One is at the bottom, one's at the top. That somebody looks at those issues, <coughs> and has an idea. Now this is also, incidentally, of, uh, uh, the operation of a very large complex system. This is the neurons at it. So this is the operation of a system of 10 to the 11 neurons. This is the operation of a system of 10 to the 10 people. They're both complicated things that we don't completely understand. Interestingly, you can, you can see that there's both engineering Science in the brown, engineering in the pink, and the green. I'd just like to point out that for anybody who's not an engineer and hasn't thought about this, that the creativity is a very important part of engineering. So uh, I was discussing with an artist recently about the, this funny thing about creativity and how people can use it and, this, and how you have to go away sometimes and uh, just go for a walk or take a bath and not, not think about the problem here. The, the hand to get out, get away the block, you have to let your brain work by itself, and then the creative thing that happens. And that happens in art, it happens in music, and it happens in engineering. When you somebody sits down and comes up with the idea, ooh, we could build a little, which would, and that would, and that would stop that, and that would, and, and so that when you do that creativity, it's one of these, it, it's, like, it, it's one of the magics. The bottom, so the bottom magic is a lot of people working together. The word collaboration maybe that doesn't sum it up. It's, com it, it's complexity, but it's people working together. Collaboration, perhaps you think of as being people working together in a team of ten or so. But in this sense, it's, it's just people working together in a planet and very, very large. But rather than a mixture of sizes of teams, in fact, it's the mixtures of communities that is part of the, uh, the whole scheme of this and one of the things that I'm going to dwell on to a certain extent. So this, this, what happens here is magic. You put out, I put out the specs for the web and some software. Here's a client, here's a server, some instructions. The first website had instructions about how to make other websites and very little else. So, uh, and if enough of the people 
picked it up for it to grow. And it grew, in fact, very, very steadily. One of the interesting graphs that I haven't put in this slide yet is that the word, the, the loan on the first web server went up by a factor of 10 every year for three years. It went out, when you put it on log graph paper, you didn't put a rule for it. Actually, you, there were two parallel lines. There were three years going from 10 hits to 10,000 hits. Nature, and throughout that time, there was this constant exponential increase. And also, there was the same ratio between the number of people on the, looking at the side away from on weekends and weekdays, which was very, which was very, uh, very interesting. So, the exponential, there was a, something that happened. For every person who came to the site, there was a certain probability that they would go away and install a browser or put up their own website. And then there were, for every person who went to that website, there was a probability that he would come back in the browsing hours and get any instructions about how to go off and make another browser or make another search. <laughs> so that is magic in the sense that it's stuff you can't really understand. That's anyway what I told my children magic is uh, stuff you don't understand. Well, yes. Uh, on the basis that they soon, and I knew they were very interested to figure out my, the magic tricks I did for them. Uh, now they can't, they're amazed that they ever felt them. But, uh, but there, is a difference. there are two magics in, in web science. One is the, ma the magic of the complexity of the web, and the other is the magic of creativity, in which we come up with the ideas to try and solve the problem. And in fact, these two are connected. Because when you have that creative idea, I think we could build a website which would do this, then the only thing that's going to happen is when you implement the idea by designing these things, is that you're hoping that the, the complexity piece at the bottom of this collaboration of all the people who go and use your photo tagging site or your geo tagging site where you're uh, putting in orienteering conditions that you've been on or whatever. You just hope that your idea, your little system you build, will scale up and will produce this emergent property which you would like to see. 